the building. Hallelujah all over the building. If God has never rescued your life, then maybe you don't understand us this morning. But if God has rescued your life, if God has saved you from anything, the least we can do is give him a hallelujah. 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 Welcome to Rose Hill Church of Port Allen this morning. We're so glad that you joined in with us this morning. And before we go higher, I ask that you bow your heads and join with me in prayer. Heavenly and most gracious Father, as I come before you this morning, Lord God, I come before you saying hallelujah. Lord, your words say that we should praise you. And Lord, this morning I have a praise in my spirit that I have to get out. God, you're so merciful. God, you're so mighty. Lord, we just thank you for being God and being God all by yourself. Lord, we thank you that as we slept and slumbered last night, Lord God, that you saw fit to allow us to see yet another day. Lord, we thank you for opening up the windows of heaven today and pouring out blessings that we don't even have room enough to receive, oh God. Lord, we thank you today. We worship you, God. We praise you, Lord God. Lord, we just thank you today, for this is the day that you've made, and we choose to rejoice and to be glad in it, oh God. Lord, have your way in this service. Move in whatever way you choose, oh God. And fix our hearts that the word that goes forth this morning, Lord God, will fall on good ground. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. You're now turned back over to our praise team.
maker, miracle worker, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. That is who you are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Is that your testimony throughout this pandemic? Has he done it for you? Has he made a way for you? That's my testimony. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. Yeah. That is who you are. That is who you are. Yeah. That is who you are. That is who you are. Yeah. That is who you are, that is who you are, yeah, that is who you are, that is who you are, yeah. Way maker, miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Way make a miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Hallelujah. How many of you know him to be a way maker? I'm talking about a miracle worker. And he's definitely a promise keeper. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's who he is. Can we, can we sing this? Jesus went. Jesus went. To Calvary. Yeah. To save a wretch. Yeah, that's personal. Like you and That's me. love. That's love. Hallelujah. That's love. Say, Jesus went. Jesus went. To Calvary, to, Calvary to, save to save a wretch like you and like me. You and me, that's love. Glory to God. That's love. Hallelujah. But then it says, but that's not how. But that's not how the story, the ends. story ends. Three days later. Three days later. He rose again. He rose again. That's love. But that's not how. That's not how the story. The story ends. Three days later. Three days later. He rose. He rose again. That's the. Hallelujah. That's the. Glory to God. I, I just felt that in my spirit because we are celebrating today Holy Communion as well. And when I think about how good God has been to me, now you can sit there and be all dignified if you want, be quiet, but God has been too good for us to be quiet. Amen. Yeah, don't let a mask mother your mouth. Don't let a mask mother your mouth. You press through that mask and let God know how good he's been to you because he's been better than that. I trust me. He's been better than that. He's been good. He's been good. I said he's been real, real good. If I could just testify. If I could just talk about how good God has been to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Secondly, to Holy Spirit. Thirdly, to you, the people of God. Thank you so much for worshiping with us. Come on, can you bless God for the best praise team on this side of heaven? Amen. We bless God for you. We thank God for those who are watching us online, but we're grateful for those who are here live and in person. And so I need to hear some noise today. It, it's not just me and the praise team today. Amen. I said I ought to get a few more amens today. Amen. 
Amen. And so we're grateful. Let's get into the word. Let's get into the word. Second Timothy. Second Timothy chapter four. Second Timothy chapter four. Verse six. Be our assignment for today. And it reads, for I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I've fought the good fight. I've finished the course. I've kept the faith. In the future, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only me, but also to all who have loved his appearance, his appearance, or his appearing. Just for a few moments, I want to talk to you today from the subject grace to choose or grace to close. Grace to close. I want you to hear me today. God has given you and I grace to close. Yeah, I'll make it plain, but let's think about this. This is now October. October of 2020. And truth be told, we have experienced a lot within these last 10 months. We started off in January. Come on, we had a resolution. Oh, y'all ain't talking to me, huh? We started off with our New Year's resolution. But what we didn't know is that COVID was coming. Many of us had plans. We had mapped out what the year was going to look like. But then all of a sudden, something happened. This pandemic came upon us. And if we will be honest with ourselves, many of us have allowed the pandemic to stop us from pursuing what God told us to pursue in January. Oh, it's cried in this Christian church. Because we started off having a plan and goals. But then this pandemic came. But what I come to encourage you about today, that if God gave you the plan in January, he gave you the plan with the pandemic in mind. Because COVID-19 didn't catch God by surprise. I need you to hear me. So if God gave you a plan that you were supposed to accomplish something this year, 2020 is not over. Which simply means I still have two months to finish what God told me I should do. Oh, y'all are quiet in here. I hear the people online. They, I hear y'all. I hear y'all. I hear y'all. I hear y'all. But they quiet in this church today. And so here's what I want you to see. God has gave you grace to close. He's given you grace to close. And he says, son, I want you to tell the people that they have two months to finish strong. They have two months to close out what they started. Because what they did, they started. And when COVID came, they paused. God says, I need you to remember that I gave you the plan. I gave you the goal. And I gave you with everything I knew was coming your way. I still expected you to close. When you think about closing, you think about businesses, and you think about Fortune 500 companies, and you think about sports teams, and everyone looks for a closer. Oh, y'all ain't talking to me. Every business needs a closer. Every team needs a closer. If I can remind myself, I think Michael Jordan, they are considered one of the greatest players, basketball players there is, but he was a closer. Yeah, yeah, you remember, you remember uh, Super Bowl, I think it was Super Bowl 51, when the uh, Atlanta Falcons and, and, and the Patriots, uh, they, they were playing in Super Bowl 51, and what happened was the Atlanta Falcons jumped out to a big lead. I'm going somewhere. They jumped out to a big lead, and the score was 28-3 to in the third quarter. Oh, y'all don't hear me. But what they didn't realize was the game is not three quarters. 
Now, it would be great if the game was consist of three quarters, then they'll won. They would have won. They would have won. They would have won. They would have been on track. They would have had one of the greatest wins ever. But what they didn't realize, there was another quarter to play, and they got too complacent and too comfortable and didn't finish what they started. Y'all ain't talking to me. And what happened was the Patriots gained momentum, and they ended up coming back in the fourth quarter, taking it into overtime, and came back from the greatest deficit ever in Super Bowl history to win the Super Bowl. Why? Because the Atlanta Falcons couldn't close. They couldn't seal the deal. Y'all ain't talking to me. And God says some of us today, we started something and we've allowed it now to pause and we haven't finished the deal because we have allowed what people are saying about 2020 to stop us from pursuing what he said about 2020. Now you're walking around talking about 2020 was the worst year ever. Oh, you're so quiet. You're letting what people say stop you from pursuing what God said. And 2020 hasn't been a bad year. I don't care what nobody say. I'm talking about it hasn't been bad for everybody. I'm not saying or negating things that have happened. Yes, people have lost loved ones. There are many things that have happened in 2020, but you're still here. Which means if you're still here, you still have time to close. I'm trying to pray. I want you to see this because God says, watch this, I chose you to close. And I've given you grace to close. You're going to help me. I've given you grace to close. So he says this, watch this. He says the closer you get to closing, expect opposition. The closer you get to closing, he says, expect opposition. Why? Because the enemy wants to detour you and have you think that you're not in God's will, that you're not in God's plan, and that everything that's happening is happening only to you. God says, no, here it is. He says, you're a finisher and not a quitter. He says, watch this, you're a closer and not a choker. So I need you to stop choking and close out what you started. Ecclesiastes 9 and 10 says it this way, whatever your hands find to do. He says, do it with all of your might. Whatever your hands find to do, you do it with all of your might. In other words, a closer is one that does what he does or does what she does with all of her might and refuse to quit. Because a closer is not that's just wi- uh, not just one that's willing, but a closer here it is is one that's able. So here it is, Paul saying in verse seven, he said, "Here it is." He says, "I've fought the good fight." Now this is Paul. This is Paul. So so what I'm trying to tell you, God has graced you. Watch this: the ability to close because first of all, you're a fighter. Yeah, you a fighter. Now, now, now I know some of y'all want to get in the natural. Don't, don't, don't get in the natural. Don't, don't think about beating nobody up. I'm not talking about that type of fighter. I'm talking about a spiritual fighter. Yeah, some of y'all ready to cut up right now. Yeah, some folk done done you something, and you, and I know I'm a fighter, Pastor, but I'm not talking about that type of fighting. Here I am. I'm talking about a closer knows, watch this, not only how to fight, but he knows who to fight. Oh, I'm going to help you today. See, a closer not only knows how to fight, but he knows who to fight. The problem with us is we're fighting the wrong people. We're fighting the wrong people. It's Ephesians, uh, here it is, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. In other words, why are you fighting people? Why are you fighting your husband? Why are you fighting your wife? Why are you fighting your sisters and your brothers? Why are you fighting your co-workers? He says the struggle is not against flesh and blood. So, so how can you fight when you don't know who you're fighting? Oh, y'all ain't talking to me. He says, how can you fight when you don't know who you're fighting? He says, for the weapons of our warfare, also they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds. Watch this. Your fight is not with people. Can I help you today? Your fight is not with people. Watch this now. Your fight is really with your purpose. I'm going to pause because that one that needs to sit for a moment. Your fight is not with people. 
Your fight is with purpose. And sometimes you're fighting against what God has purposed you to do. Because you can't figure it out because you think you know it all and you're trying to do it in your own might. You're trying to have your own little mind to figure out what God is doing. God says, no, 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 baby, lean not to your own understanding. But in all of your ways, he says, acknowledge me and I'll direct your path. I'll show you what the purpose is and you'll stop trying to fight people and you'll start listening to me. Watch this. So to be a good fighter, you must be tactical and you must be trained. For what weapons are you using to fight? Could it be that you are fighting with the wrong weapons? Oh, because some of y'all cuss folk clean out. Oh, y'all. <laughs> some of y'all good with the mouth. Y'all good. Y'all good. You're good. You got a good mouthpiece. You'll tear folk off. You'll run it down. You can tell them. You'll tell them. That's how you win your fight with your mouth. Your words. But I want you to understand that your words is not the weapon. It's the word that is the weapon that you need in order to fight this fight. You need the word of God. You remember, you remember when Jesus had just came off a of fast. It was in Luke chapter 4. Jesus had just came from fasting 40 days and 40 nights. And the first person he met was the enemy. And the enemy come upon him and said, I know you hungry. Y'all ain't hearing me. The enemy said, I, I know you hungry, man. You, you, ain't eat, you haven't eaten in 40 days. I know, I know your stomach right now is in your back. You haven't, you haven't eaten. I know you hungry. And Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone. Y'all ain't talking to me. He says, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God do man live. So in other words, God says I'm not moved by the physical because I understand this fight that, this fight that I'm in is a spiritual fight and the only weapon that I'm going to use to defeat the enemy is not my words but the word of God. Watch this. Some of you all like to fight with your words but that's fleshly. Yeah, that's a flesh fight. Yeah, you, 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 you're trying to cut folk up with your mouth. And, 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 and then you think you won something. But what you don't realize, your spirit ain't right. Oh, we y'all quiet in this Christian church. Let me see. Everybody, the walls, amen walls. Here it is. He said, the word is your weapon. Second uh, Corinthians 6 and 7 says, in the word of truth and in the power of God, by the weapons of righteousness, for the right hand and the left hand, Ephesians 6 and 17 says, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So you got to have the word of God with you to fight off the enemy. Do you hear me? So the word will keep the enemy away from you. Watch this. And when you look at people, stop looking at them as flesh. Start looking at the spirit behind the flesh and it'll help you see who they really are and who's really using them so you don't be mad at your brother and sisters and cussing them out. If you're going to cuss anybody, cuss the devil out. Cuss him out. <laughs> Tell him about himself. Watch this. Not only is the word your weapon, but here it is. Prayer is your weapon. Prayer is your weapon. But here's what has happened. The enemy has, uh, has lured us to sleep, as I talked about on last week, and we put that weapon away. We're not praying like we used to. Oh, we're praying and not praying. Oh, church, y'all can just feel me how I feel. Y'all looking at me. Y'all miss me? Because you're looking at me. But I need you to hear me today because I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to see you more so. I'm excited to impart in you what you've been missing and what you've needed. And you just needed to hear this today that God says it's time to get back to prayer. Time for you to start back praying because that's your weapon. Ephesians 6 and 18 says, with all prayer and petition, pray at all times, not in the flesh, but in the spirit. He says, pray in the spirit. Let me just help you. Because when you, when you say spirit, some folk get spooky. And, and, and they go real deep. Now, let me just help you. The spirit is the word of God. Because God's word is spirit and life. So whenever you're praying, you pray the spirit, pray his word. God, you said in your word. You in the spirit now. 
Oh, y'all, come on. See, y'all looking for something deep and extra. But when you pray the word of God, you're praying in the spirit. God, you said in your word that the weapons of my warfare are not corner. That's the word. God, you said in your word that I'm the head and not the tail above only and never beneath. That's the word. God, you said in your word God, that, that you are Jehovah Rapha, you are the healer. By your stripes, I am healed. You said to count it all joy. That's what you said in your word. When I find myself in various trials and tribulations, knowing that the trying of my faith work in patience. That's the word. That's what he means when he says pray in the spirit. He says, and with this in view, be on alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints and pray on my behalf, this is Paul speaking, that utterance may be given to me in the opening of my mouth to make known the boldness, the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Paul is in prison encouraging us. Oh, you talking about what we going through. Here this man locked up in prison, did nothing wrong but preach Jesus. And he's locked up in prison and still encouraging us from the walls, from four walls caged in behind bars with, with chain and ball on it. Encouraging the people of God, watch this, to continue to pray. So instead of paying folk back, here it is, we should be praying folk back. Let that sizzle in your spirit. Because we quickly want to pay somebody back. Got to get them back. Vengeance is mine, said the Lord. He says, I will repay. And you don't need blood on your hands, so stop trying to pay folk back. Here it is. Prayer is one of the most powerful weapons God has given us. And looking ahead to the future, things we need, and the more that we need right now, the most thing that we need right now, my brothers and sisters, is prayer. Oh, hear me. Prayer. Because prayer still works. Prayer still works. I said prayer still works. It's not the old church. It's not the old church. It's the new church. Prayer still works. Prayer still changes things and prayer still changes people. Jeremiah 3 and 3 says this. He says, I call. He called to me and I will answer you. He says, call to me rather and I will answer you. He says, and I will tell you great and mighty things which you do not know. Need to hear that. So God says, while you're up worrying about stuff, stressing yourself out about stuff, won't you talk to me? He says, if you call on me, if you call to me, he says, I'll answer you. See, you waiting on other folk to answer you. You calling on them. They don't have the answer. They need an answer themselves. And you calling them as if they have the answer. God says, no, call on me. He says, I want to share things with you. I want to tell you some good things. Here it is. A fighter trains and he spars in secret. See, when a, when a, when a real good fighter, he don't want people seeing him train. See, because here it is. Can I help you? See, what people don't see what you've been going through. See, because the real you, you won't tell everybody what it really is you're dealing with. Right? Because behind the scenes, you fighting some stuff. Watch this. That you really don't want people to know you're fighting. But what God says, while you're sparring in secret, <laughs> while you're preparing in secret, yeah. He says, while you're training in secret, he says, watch this, whenever you get in the ring and start fighting openly, I'm going to reward you. Yeah, I'm going to reward you. And people are going to wonder, how are you able to defeat it? Because, baby, I've been training. I've been fighting in secret. You get what I'm telling you. See, when David came upon the giant, See, folk was amazed at David that what, how this little shepherd boy is able to take the head of a giant like this. David said, watch this. David says, y'all didn't see what I was doing in secret. See, y'all didn't see when I was fighting the lion, the tigers, and the bears. Like, oh, my. Y'all didn't see that. Y'all didn't see that when I was behind the scenes getting the training to fight. And now that I face this giant, and y'all think I'm scared of this uncircumcised giant, I don't care how big it is, it ain't bigger than the God you serve. And let me pause just to say this. This one even in my notes. But whenever you get ready to fight, be careful that people don't try to get you to use their weapons. Because what worked for them may not work for you. Y'all ain't talking to me. Yeah, and see, that's what, that's what David, brother, and them tried to get him. He said, won't you put on my armor? David said, hold up. 
they would put it on. He said, he said, hold up, Jack. Look what he said to you. He said, this don't fit me. <laughs> David said, this don't fit me. Your, your, your clothes too big, and, and, and not only is your armor too big, but then your, your, your weapon that you have ain't fitting for me. He said, I'm going to go with what's been working. Y'all ain't talking to me. Yeah, he said, yeah. He said, I'm going to go with what's been working for me in secret because I have slingshot. Don't look like much. It's just a little something, something. It ain't much. And that's what folks see you. They don't see you. They don't see much to you. But what they don't realize, you got something big with you. Yeah, I may not look like much to you, but I got somebody big with me. And what it is, whatever I come against, no matter how big it is, I got a big God that's with me. Here it is. Let me give you scripture. Matthew 6 and 6 says, but you, he says, when you pray, go into your inner room. He says, watch this, and close your door. In other words, when you're going to prayer, you've got to keep certain stuff out. Whenever you get ready to go in prayer, you got to close the door behind you. Watch this, because there's some stuff that don't need to go into prayer with you. There's some people who don't need to go in prayer with you. And you have to close the door behind you. And watch what he says. He says, close the door and pray to your father who is in secret. And your father who is in secret, watch this, he will do what he said he would do. He will reward you openly. Some of us, we're shadow boxing. Watch this, and you can't hit it. Because what you don't realize, the shadow is you. What if I told you you're fighting against you? Oh, we, if you just hear me, you, you're fighting against yourself. Because watch this, in us is doubt. And if we're not careful, doubt will overtake us. And so a lot of times we, 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 we're so focused on trying to fight people, but you really need to look at ourselves. I'm, I'm pressing. Let, let me go. Watch this. Here it is. Not only must you be a fighter, but then you must be a finisher. I'm in the text. Verse 7, the B clause says, I finished the course. Paul said, I fought a good fight. And not only did I fight, but here it is. He said, I finished. How many things have you started but not finished? How many things have we started and not completed? I don't even want to go there. <laughs> Oh, Lord, I don't know how many things I've started, T, and haven't finished. Plenty of honey dudes around the house. You going to talk to me, Leon? Plenty, plenty of honey dudes around the house. Plenty. Started but couldn't finish. Something came up, and I'm going to get back to it, babe. I'm going to get back to it. But I didn't finish it. And God says, how many things have we started that we haven't finished? Watch this. Because the truth is there are many starters but few finishers. I don't know about you, but I want to be in the finishing spot. Yeah, that's why God says, I want you to close it out, because you can't start strong and not finish strong. Uh, that, was a, that was a story of this, uh, I mean, of this great Olympic uh, runner, you know who is, Usain Bolt. Yeah, he's a great, he's a great Olympic runner. He's, he's considered the fastest man in the world, but this is what he says. He says, there are better starters than me. He says, but I'm a strong finisher. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. Hussein say, Hussein say, that many of them start out, you know, they jump out the block, gone. But by the time they get to the finish line, I done passed them all up. You know what I'm talking about? That. So, so in other words, there are many that start quicker than me, but it's not just starting quick, it's finishing strong. 2 Corinthians 8 and 10 says, he says, I give my opinion in this matter, for this is to your advantage. Who were the first to begin a year ago, not only to this, but also to desire to do it. Verse 11 says, but now finish doing it also, so that just as there was the readiness and the desire to do it, there shall also be the completion of it by your ability. So don't just have the desire to start something and not have the desire to see it to the end. Because most of the times, that's what we do. We have great desires. Man, come on. We, we, we think of some stuff. Boy, God, give us some great ideas. Come on. How many, how many businesses do you have still in you? Yo, y'all ain't saying nothing. How many businesses 
do you have in you, watch this, and people waiting on you? Because God gave it to you, but watch this, the enemy talked you out of it. God told you to do it, and then it was in your mind. Y'all ain't talking to me. Y'all ain't talking to me. Ooh, they're going to take me. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And then what you don't understand is whenever God gives you something, watch this, he also gives you provision for it. I don't know why, but I always tell people this. I don't need the money. Getting ahead of myself. That's my last point, but I'm going to say it now. I don't need money. What I need is favor. See, most folks looking for money. I need favor. Because if you have favor, watch this, you have favor with the people with the money. And some of us don't need the money in our hand no way. Let me keep on pressing. Tell the truth. We don't need that money in our hand. Don't do right with money as it is. What you talking about? Just putting money in my hand. Lord said, I'm going to give you the favor. <laughs> uh, oh, look at this. Watch this. Finishers, here it is. Finishers are proactive and not reactive. See, the problem with us, we react to everything. And we don't prepare for no thing. So when something happened, we reacting to it. But if we were proactive, we'd be prepared for things when they do happen. That's what a finisher does. A finisher says, watch this, I'm in the game, and if something happens, I don't just react to it. I'm proactive because I was training for it. I was prepared for it. So now it's three seconds left, and everybody else, oh, it ain't enough, no, ain't enough time. Oh, it's enough time. See, a, a finisher say, just put the ball in my hand. <laughs> While everybody else is panicking, a finisher, finisher says, give it here. See, a finisher want it because he's prepared or she's prepared when no one was looking for this moment. The question is, are we prepared for the moments when God bring them to pass or when God bring them before us? Are we prepared? So here it is, Hebrews 12, and 1 says, Therefore, since we have been compassed with so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, he says, let also us lay aside every encumbrance and every sin which so easily entangle us. Entangle us. He says, and the word entangle, let me keep pressing past that. He said, and let us I'm gonna keep going. He said, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Fixing our eyes on Jesus. Did you, did you hear that part? See, the reason you can run what's been set before you because you're keeping your eyes on Jesus. He says he is the author and the finisher of your faith. So God says, watch this, I started it and I can complete it because I knew your life before. Watch this, you knew who you were. I'm trying to press. Y'all tired of me. Watch this, not only must you be a fighter, but you must also remain, here's my third point, faithful. Oh, I'm going to sit here for a minute because faithfulness is one thing that we're lacking. God is faithful, but we're not faithful to him. House pastor, oh, you all on my coin right now, Pastor B. Here it is, verse 7, the C clause says, he says, not only am I a fighter, not only am I a finisher, he says, but I'm faithful. He says, I've kept the faith. I kept the faith, which gave me the ability to finish my course. See, faithfulness gives you the ability to finish what you started. But when you're not faithful, you can't finish because, watch this, you don't have the ability to finish because you're not faithful enough, committed enough, dedicated enough to complete it. Word translated here means kept, the kept. He says, I've kept the faith, which means to keep. Here it is, by guarding, by watching over. He says, I've kept. In other words, I guard my faith. Yeah, I protect my faith. Not only do I protect my peace, but I protect my faith. Watch this. You have to guard yourself, guard your faith. Why? Because the enemy wants you to doubt. And so whenever you put a guard up, you have to protect it so that the enemy don't try to 
uh, uh, intrude on what you believe and start moving you out of what you know is right. And that's what's happening right now because the enemy is moving people off of what they really believe and they no longer have faith in God, which means they can never remain faithful because you're not putting your faith in the one who's able to keep you. You're being moved by every little wind of doctrine right now. Every little thing sounds good. We follow it. Every person pop up on Facebook, we entertain it. Because they have a title in front of their name. Yeah. <laughs> Watch this. I want you to see this. He says, I kept the faith. But I want to help you. Keeping faith is not easy. Not, not in this world we live in. Staying faithful is not easy. Why? Because there are so many temptations. There's so many things that's trying to vie for your attention, that's trying to get you off track, that's trying to lure us in. So keeping the faith is not easy because when trials and when tribulations come, sometimes it can throw us off of our spot. And so it can be difficult remaining faithful. But faithfulness also, I mean, let me say it right, faithfulness also puts you in a position to go through some stuff. Because when you're faithful, you got to know that you're going to have to go through some stuff. You're going to have to endure some stuff as a good soldier. Yeah, you have to endure because trials will come. Tribulations will come. But that should not stop us from being faithful. Faithful to the end. Remain faithful until the end. 2 Timothy 1.11 says, For which I was appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher. He says, For this reason I also suffer these things. But I am not ashamed, for I know who I have believed in. I like that. And I am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until that day. I have confidence in God that even when it doesn't look like it's going to happen, I still remain faithful. Even when I have to stand by myself and look around and nobody's with me, I remain faithful. Why? Because my faith is not in people. My faith is in God. And God is the one that helps me remain faithful. Why? Because he's proven himself to me. Oh, he's proven himself to be faithful when other folk fake. They ran out on me now. They faked me. They told me they were going to be with me. Then I looked around and they were gone. That's what I'm talking about. You faked me out. God says, watch this. I will never fake you out. I'm, I'm too faithful for that. So if I remain faithful to you, all I ask is that you remain faithful to me. My last and final point, because y'all tired of me. Watch this. The favor of God comes. See, when you, when you fight and you, you finish and you stay faithful, he says, here come favor. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. He says, here come favor. Let me help you. Because some folk right now saying you lucky. See, see, you you got it mixed up. I don't operate in luck. I don't, I don't live in happenstance. I live in favor. Watch this. Because whenever God blesses you, it's the favor of God. Because we don't deserve it. Y'all ain't talking to me. See, come on now. If if God would just treat us like we treat him, but it's the faithfulness of God to his father that requires us to receive his blessings and his reward. And so when folks see you, they say, you lucky, you got this. But you don't realize, baby, I don't live on love. Everything that happened to me is supposed to happen. Why? Because I serve a God of favor. And don't get mad. It, 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 it's all on me. I understand it. So don't be jealous of my favor. Get to know the faithful God that I serve, and you can get that same favor. You know, you got some, some favor haters. <laughs> don't get mad at you because God is raining on you. Come on, don't get mad at me because God rained on me. Watch this now. Because if you do right, he rained on you too. 
Yeah, you, you, you talk about, oh, they, they think they something now. <laughs> you know how folk get to acting, oh, he think they something now. I remember. You, I remember too. <laughs> Trust me, I remember. <laughs> and I promise you, you don't remember like we remember. <laughs> but God says, watch this, I'll grant you favor, watch this, to preserve you. I'll give you favor to preserve your life. Ask Job about it. I'm out of here. Let's go. Ask Job about it. He gave Job favor. And even though it looked like Job lost. See, because here's what you got to know. When they look like you're losing, people come around and start talking. When it looks like you're losing, you get a crowd. Folk even close to you, y'all ain't talking to me. And even folk that close to you start looking at you saying, yeah, look, look at you, look at you now. Look, look, look. You, 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 you hold yourself. Look at you now. You serving God and doing all this and you're going through all that. You're struggling now. You, you're going through, you can't barely making it. But what you don't understand is, baby, all I have to do is remain faithful. And if I remain faithful, watch this, favor is coming. Watch this. I'm talking to some men and women now. Remain faithful in the relationship you're in. Oh, Lord. Oh, and keep going, Pastor. <laughs> yeah. Remain faithful in that relationship. Stop going outside of it. I ain't talking to them. They ain't talking to us. I'm talking to them. <laughs> remain faithful in the relationship you're in. And if you remain faithful to that, watch this, you will get favor. The Bible says this, Proverbs 18.22. When a, when a man finds a wife, oh, let me go. No, I don't know. I'm talking to you. He said, when a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing and obtain favor. Y'all ain't talking to me. See, brothers and sisters, if you want favor from the, from, from the Lord, be faithful to that individual that you're with. You ain't married them yet, but if you do right. <laughs> yeah. He says that you'll find favor with God if you do right. So you got to remain faithful to the end. You can't be dipping and dabbing, you know. Or skipping and dipping, you know. Stick to it. Stay committed to that one. Oh, I ain't, this, I don't even know what I'm saying. Hold on. You, you're doing too much. You, you, you have too many options. Focus on the one that you know is giving you the attention that you need, but you're afraid of it because you're not used to it. Oh, I'm talking to somebody. I, I didn't even come to say this, but don't be afraid, watch this, to receive God's favor. Because, watch this, when you are not accustomed to his favor, you can sometimes be fearful. And God says, I don't need you to be fearful of it because I'm blessing you with it. So don't, 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 don't think it's not me because you're not used to it. Oh, who am I talking to? He says, he or she may not look like the one that you wanted. But that's my favor. Oh, I want to help somebody because favor don't come always looking like favor. Sometimes favor look like foolishness. Oh, my wife raised her hand on that one. I'm pressing that. But when a man finds a wife, finds a good thing, man, and obtain the favor of God. I don't know about you, but I want his favor. I want God's favor to rest upon my life. I want it to rest upon my family. I want God's favor to rest upon this ministry. There are things, watch this, that we're going to accomplish and receive. Watch this, that money won't buy. And people won't be able to take the credit. It's going to be the favor of God. Yeah, I feel it. It's going to be the favor of God that allows it to happen. Ah. Father, thank you for your favor. Thank you for the blessings that you rain on us that we don't deserve. Your unmerited favor, 
thing that we, that, that we should not have, you still blessed us with it. Thank you for your mercies, oh God. Your mercies are renewed every day. Thank you, God, for loving us in spite of us. Thank you for keeping us when we don't even want to be kept. Oh God, we thank you today. God, your mercies are renewed every day. Every time we wake up in the morning, you said it's a brand new mercy. Hallelujah. And God, I speak the favor of God upon our lives, that the favor of God will rest upon everyone that's watching, that the favor of God will rest upon everyone in this building today. Let them realize that they are blessed and highly favored. God chose you to close. <laughs> he chose you to be a closer. You don't think you can close, but he says, not by power. Nor by might. He says, but it's going to be done by his spirit. Yeah. Touch right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for strength. I pray for peace. I pray for direction today. God, we desire to close out this year stronger than we started. And God, we come against any hindrance, any doubt, any confusion that would try to divide us or keep us from accomplishing what you said. I thank you now that we are winners. <laughs> I thank you that we are victorious. I thank you that we are more than conquerors in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, there may be someone in the room, there may be someone that's watching us that haven't accepted you. And the only way they can close, they must accept the closer, Jesus Christ. So we make an appeal to three people. First, to the person who hasn't accepted him as their Lord and Savior. Secondly, to the person who did accept, but sometimes you feel like you're not as connected as you should be. He says, I still love you. He says, I'm calling you back home. Yeah, you've been disconnected, but he says it's time to reconnect. Today is the day that you reconnect. Today is the day that you plug back into the power source. Who am I talking to? Yeah, you allow life to come and unplug you. You allow things to happen in your life and they unplugged you from the source. God says today is the day that you reconnect. <laughs> yeah. He says, I'm married to the backslider. My sheep know my voice. God is calling you today. And thirdly, if Rose Hill Church of Port Allen has been a blessing to you and you need a church family, we're not a perfect church. Hear me. God is not looking for a perfect church. He's looking for a person that's available. And watch this. We are one that's striving for perfection. Mr. Mark, yeah, we're not perfect. But he who begun a great work in us shall perfect us unto the day of Jesus. And so if you would love to be a part of this family, we gladly receive you. So I ask that you repeat after me. Dear Lord God, today, I'm your child. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he died and you raised him from the dead. I confess every sin, every shortcoming, I repent. Come into my heart. Be Lord, Be Lord of my life today. today this day, this day my, life my life shall never be the, same. Never be the same. In Jesus' name, In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Come on, bless the Lord for them. Bless the Lord for those who are watching. Thank you so much for all of those who are here. If you just prayed that prayer, we want to say welcome to the kingdom of God. And if you became a part of our family, we want to say welcome to Rose Hill Church of Port Allen. Listen, right here, those who are watching us in the comment section, you can put become a member, you can put rededication, or you can also say accepting Christ for the first time. And someone from this ministry will be in contact with you. Listen, um, I want to give a few announcements and then we'll do uh, partake of the Lord's Supper and then we will actually take up an offering. Uh, listen, I want you to prepare this coming Wednesday to receive the word of God. Uh, we're going to have a special guest on this coming Wednesday. We're going to talk, let's talk hope. Yeah, this month is going to be a month of hope. And we're going to have some people to come on and we're going to talk about some things that have happened in their lives and how God brought them through it. We will have with us uh, this coming Wednesday a very uh, sister from the Caribbean, from the islands. 
She'll be with us on this Wednesday. Sister Tamara Sims, she wrote a book called Hashtag Decisions. And I don't even want to tell a story, but I'll give you a brief. Her husband died. She got married and her husband died. And um, God brought her through some stuff. So I think someone needs to hear that. That there's still hope after death. Hear me, there's still hope after death. And so she will be our guest this Wednesday. And so uh, for those who are watching us, we thank you so much. But for those who are in the house, come on. Can you bless God for yourselves? Thank you so much for joining in with y'all. Act like y'all don't want to be here today. Did y'all enjoy the word? Amen. Amen. As always, my prayer is that something has been said, that your faith has been heightened and your outlook brightened. So join us on next Sunday. We're back to church. And so you have to register in order to be able to attend. And so if you're going to attend, you have to register. And so we're grateful to God for that. So listen, this is uh, also a Domestic Violence Month. Yeah. And so we want to make sure that we keep that in mind. If you know of someone that's experiencing domestic violence, listen, sometimes people just need an ear to listen to and you can help them get out of that situation. So this is Domestic Violence Month. And we also uh, adhere to that. This is uh, also Pastor's Appreciation Month. And so if you love your pastor or your, just let him know every now and then how much you appreciate him. Amen. And uh, we're grateful for that. So let's partake of the Lord's Supper. Bible says, while sitting with his disciples in the upper room, Jesus took the bread. He gave thanks. He said, this is my body that will be offered for you. As often as you do this, you do this in remembrance of me. Let us eat together. In the same manner, he took the cup. He gave thanks. He says, this is the blood of the New Testament. As often as you do this, you show forth the Lord's death until he come again. Let us drink together. Amen. Amen. Listen, are you ready to give as God has purposed in your heart to give? I said, are you ready to give? Online, are you ready to give? They, Y'all quiet in here today. Listen, this is what I want you to do. For those who are here, I want you to prepare your hearts and minds to give as God has purposed in your heart to give. The Bible declares that he loves a cheerful giver. And so those who are here live, you just fill out your tide envelope, and no one will come around. We're not passing it. You'll give it on your way out. Amen? And so we have someone at the door, and you can drop it in the offering basket on your way out. For those online, there are many ways you can give. Uh, you'll see those posted. We thank you so much for your generosity. Even through this pandemic, God has kept us. He's sustained us, and we are lacking nothing, and I'm grateful for that. And so we want you to continue to give because there's always more to do. There's always more we can do. And so as you continue to give, we'll continue to be a blessing. And my prayer is that whatever seed leave your hand, it will never leave your life. I speak it over you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So listen, on behalf of my lovely wife, honey, you want to say something today? I want you to. I want you to. Come see me. Hey, boo. Just say hello to the people. Hello, good morning. We are so excited to be fellowshipping with you all here in the building as well as online. We pray God's favor over your life and you have an awesome and blessed day. Amen. Amen. Also, it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month, too, as well. So let's please remember all of those who are experiencing uh, hard times by this cancer. We're going to kick cancer. We're going to defeat it. Amen? And so we thank you all. Listen, God, we thank you for what our eyes have seen and what our ears have heard. Now, Father, as we leave this place, but never your presence, give us traveling grace until we meet again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Go in peace. Have a fantastic week.